This Avalanche Safety Report is brought to you by Mountain TV. Learn more at mtn-tv.com. Welcome to the weekly Avalanche Safety Report. I am here as always with Brian Lazar from the CAIC. How's it going this week, Brian? It's going well. How are you doing, Alan? I'm well, thank you. So uh, I just want to start by kind of showing where our current state of the snowpack uh, lives right now. So a combination of lack of snowfall through a good portion of January and the first part of February and some unseasonably warm, even record high temperatures um, this week have really done some damage to our snowpack, which sits at 84% of long-term median across the state of Colorado right now. Hopefully we are looking at a pattern change as we move towards the weekend, but these warm temperatures and lack of snowfall have diminished our snowpack to where uh, you know, we're well below average at this point. So this week, Brian, with the warm temperatures, they actually closed a few areas in Steamboat, but I know as it gets colder, you know, the avalanche risk isn't necessarily as high. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, I mean, we had quite the spike in temperatures this week, which led to a, a big round of wet avalanche activity, mostly loose wet avalanches, but a few wet slabs across the state. Con these are conditions that are most indicative of like April. So this was a little uncomfortable to see this happening in early February. But as you noted, these really warm temperatures will come to an end after Friday, and which brings us to essentially widespread, generally safe avalanche conditions now that the wet avalanche activity is in the rearview mirror. And so that's the indicated by all this green on the map, which means most slopes are going to be safe from avalanche activity and safe to recreate on. This is a good time to get into the backcountry despite the challenging riding conditions. The risk of getting caught in an avalanche is really low. So, but it doesn't mean avalanches are impossible. And what I want to point out here are these few isolated slopes where you can still get into trouble. This is not to suggest that conditions are dangerous. They're only potentially dangerous on these really isolated slopes. And that danger is driven by wind drifted snow. We saw a lot of wind this week. And despite the lack of snowfall when the wind changes direction, it finds new fetches. We've seen a lot of wind drifted snow creating in these isolated slopes, easy to break off stiff wind drifted slabs like what you can see in this video. Here's another good example of a wind drifted slope. In this case, a really thin, shallow slab and then just some cracking across the slope. This is a sign that you found one of these isolated slopes. Even though the slope didn't slide, it means you've got the stiff wind drifted slab. And again, these are fairly isolated in the terrain. And where you're going to find them are up high along ridge lines on steep convex rolls in thin, rocky areas like what you can see in this photo up near Pearl Pass in the Elk Mountains. You can see that these avalanches are mostly small, but the chunks are pretty hard. And in these thin areas, you can get dragged through, you know, rocks and, you know, really shallowly buried obstacles, which is really what poses the risk. And if you look at this avalanche from above, you can imagine just getting dragged into that scree field could be potentially dangerous, even if you weren't fully buried in the avalanche. Uh, we did have one more here um, up north of Chicago Ridge, but you can see similar characteristics of the terrain. Steep convex roll, the cornice here, which is showing obvious signs of recent wind drifting and a lot of thin rocky areas here. And this one pulled out naturally just from the wind drifted snow. So these are what these isolated slopes do look like. And so with the, you know, I'll, I'll call it kind of frozen packed down that melted from earlier in the week, now that we've got new snow coming on top of that, what's the danger level like with those situations. Yeah, unfortunately, this incoming snowstorm doesn't look awesome, um, but some areas of the state are gonna get some decent snowfall starting on Friday night. You can see here from this model run that most snowfall is gonna fall in the Northern Mountains. This includes the Park Range north of Steamboat and then areas from kind of Summit County north along the Front Range through Cameron Pass. Um, this, some of this snowfall may spread into the Southern Mountains, but it's really areas in the north that get more than about eight inches of new snowfall that are gonna drive the avalanche danger. We might see an uptick to moderate avalanche danger, again, for those isolated wind drifted slabs. And so if you can avoid terrain features that look like this during and after our new snowfall this weekend, essentially thin rocky areas, convex rolls and stiff wind drifted pillows, you can uh, recreate safely this weekend. So I want people to enjoy it. Well, it sounds like a fun weekend to be out and boy, we've just had a, a bingo card of items <laughs> to talk about this season so far. Uh, not a lot of uh, winners <laughs> hitting the bingo cards, but man, we've just had things all over the map. Yeah, it seems to kind of be the new normal, so we have to stay on our toes. So, uh, But we've got a little a brief window from some pretty safe avalanche conditions this weekend. Just watch out for those wind drifted slopes with the new snow. Right on. Well, thank you so much, Brian. You can always stay up to date with the latest forecast at colorado.gov avalanche. 
Enjoy the backcountry and be sure to stay alert and stay safe.